This is a 2015 Princess V57 and we're here in Swanwick Marina to do the full walkthrough tour on this boat. And it is a stunning boat. We're really, really pleased to start working with these large V-series princesses. We've got a V50, now a V57, and there's quite a few differences between these boats. We're really excited to show you the differences. Yes, we are. Um, so we're gonna do the full walkthrough tour right here, right now, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. Before you get started, check out our Parker Adams Superstore with loads of main brands for upgrading your boat, such as Raymarine, Garmin and Fusion. Check it out after this video. Hi there, I'm Jonathan Parker. I'm here with Andrew Adams from Parker Adams Boat Sales. And this is the V57. Now we're going to start up in the bow. Um, as you can see, pretty obvious because of the front of the boat. Bow, stern. Pointy bit. Pointy bit, <laughs> pointy bit. Um, and um, as you can see, we've got a windlass, as, as you would expect, um, and two anchor lockers. Um, one in there thing, access anchor chain. I quite like the fact they're sealed and drained as they should be. Um, nice quality. And we've got a anchor washdown as well. A benefit of that is Obviously, we don't want a salty, muddy chain and anchor coming, deploying back into the boat because um, these will decay over time. So as you're bringing the chain in, you can wash it down. A really nice feature, not on all boats. Really nice feature to have and also handy for washing down the bow of the boat as well. Um, really nice fair leads. And as you can see, it's all laid to teak all around the side decks as well. Um, and we also have um, a nice cover over the front bathing cushions and a really nice size as well. Um, actually, it has been raining, but say, I'm braving, you're, you're very brave, I'm braving mate. lying down. <laughs> but as you can see, nice size, just to appreciate the size of this, you can get three, four people um, in a row along here. So really nice, and it's sunny as well. Um, in a February, nearly March, bit chilly day, it's actually warm up the front here. Um, really, really beautiful lines the Princess V57 has always had. Um, and we do have, and we're going to go through some of the toys now before we go to the inside, electric retractable roof with these great skylights in it. You really appreciate them, especially when we go in, in see on the inside. It's a big roof. Look at the size of that roof. Really nice. I really like the styling cues um, with the really dark, almost metallic, sort of dark grey. Um, and this is, on, this is a wrap, I believe. It's not painted on which is quite nice. And we come down, LED lights, and we can see on the top, we've got open array radar, track vision on here as well, um, for the television and the entertainment system, um, as well as we've even got a wind instrument on the top. It's quite rare on um, power boats to see the wind instrument and direction. Very, very useful for when mooring. Really gives you an idea of the wind direction so you know how to battle the elements. Because being a hard top boat and you're inside, it's really hard to tell what the wind and the tides are doing. Right, first part I'm going to show you, because it's open, um, is actually the crew cabin. So it does have a crew cabin. Um, I will just pop down just to show you the depth of it. But what I'll do is I'll tell you there is a toilet, but hidden under a nice cabinet. It's quite messy down here. Tools are down here, life jackets and chairs. So it's a really, really good storage area. There's a single bed just in front of me here. Um, a really nicely fitted, for a crew cabin, sink with a mirror as well and storage underneath this side there's storage cupboards but there's also a wash and dry washing machine you have a quick look so the washing machine just here a bosch wash and dry washing machine um, all very nicely finished and it's even just go for the just because it's got the woodwork as well it just has a really nice feel even in the crew cabin they could have just made this very basic but they didn't Most people in the UK, it's a typical crew cabin. It's not used as a crew cabin, it's used as a storage facility. Exactly, it's very rare. But a very useful ever storage facility. <laughs> um, there is a heating vent in here as well though. So the heating is on. Well, so even the crew get some heating? Even the crew oh, gets some that, heating. That is impressive. And this does just quite simply shut down. And when it is shut, there is a window in there. And then we'll show you the, um, the sun lounging area once we have showed you the other couple of toys on here. So we have a hydraulic bathing platform. We got it partly deployed. This obviously does go right the way under the water. Um, we've got it partly deployed, so then we can open the garage and we can show you this actually, the size of this garage is huge. Um, there's actually, it's a Turbojet 325 Williams in here, fully inflated, 
fully in it and there's still room around it. I should say the owner asked me to clear the stuff off it um, before doing the tour but actually I think it was quite useful to see how much space there is in there. So the owner's got on here, he's got a pump to pump things up with, he's got fishing rods in there, he's got cleaning materials. So not only is it a, a big tender garage, it's also a space to store things as well. So I think it's really useful. And then it looks to me like there's an additional little tender in there as well. In fact, it might be a paddleboard. No, I think there's a paddleboard in there. So again, paddleboard storage. But if you wanted to just have a small tender that you just took to the shore sometime, you don't want to take the Williams out, you could even store that in there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you can have any, you don't have to have a tender. You can just have it full of paddle boards and kayaks and things like that. Really, really useful space. Um, really nice walk around this boat has. So not only is it a nice walk around this side, you can actually walk, even with the garage up, you can walk straight up the side decks um, I will just pop up just because I want to show you. It also has stern to sort of mooring um, winches as well. And these are electric. So the switches are literally just below me here. Um, so really helps with mooring and just getting those lines tight. Um, you can use them for normal mooring as well. Probably quite rare you do that, but actually um, a useful thing to have because this is a, a proper med spec boat because this also has a passerelle as well. Electrical, retractable, disappears completely under the, the steps on the starboard side. Um, but we won't operate that today because they're very slow at deploy. So we haven't got time for that because it's such a big boat. We've got so much to see. Right, let me just pop back. And what okay, we'll while, do... While you're doing that, you put that back together again and yeah, I'm going to walk down the, side walk down the, the line. Perfect. And then you can see it back together. The lines of the Princess, I think, are absolutely beautiful. And Princess is one of my favourite brands of boats. Um, every time you see a Princess out on the water, you just think that it has so much style and so much presence about it. And this boat is absolutely true to that form. You've got these really, really large porthole windows. Now, the age of this boat is such that the later generations would have had swathes of window all the way down the side here. Um, but these have just got really large portholes which I have to say in a big seaway I think I'd prefer that although you can't deny the amount of light that comes in through these full glass windows on some of the more modern boats. The height of the boat it is tall so if in terms of height wise it's up just above my, my shoulder height there so certainly you'd need to have a crew that was good at lassoing and dropping lines down to secure it. Very sensibly, of course, with a boat of this size, you've got cleats in multiple positions along the side of the boat. It's beyond the point where you just have a centre cleat, so you have two centre cleats on here. You've got a large win window just here, which gives you access to the guest cabin, which is absolutely beautiful. I say guest, the master cabin, and that is a stunning cabin, a beautiful place to be. Um, Jonathan mentioned about these, um, these wraps and this sort of anthracite metallic-y colour here. The wrap is picked up on there and then picked up on the top. I think that's factory standard, but it really does make this boat look absolutely beautiful. So you can see how quickly we've put the boat back into normal condition. Um, the hydraulically operated bathing platform is now up and you can see beautifully fitting JB covers on this boat and we'll step back on board. The tender garage is now safely away. The name of the boat is Archers, and you can see that's backlit on there as well. Um, I believe the person may be taking the name with him. A few of his boats kept the name on a few of his boats called Archers. But as we step up into the cockpit space here, ah, we can yeah. find Jonathan Hello. lounging. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I've been working hard outside, and you've just been chilling out. Well, that, that went together so quickly. I thought <laughs> I'd just come and wait for you. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd wait in this fantastic cockpit space. There's actually seating for about eight or nine people out here. But this isn't the only seating area, there's loads of them in the boat. We'll show you them in a minute. Um, but we also have a fantastic sunbathing area. It really is huge. And you mentioned earlier, Jonathan, that you could get three or four people on the bow. Well, I reckon you'd comfortably get four or five people down there. I think you're absolutely right. Um, this table's really nice. Um, I really like um, the way it's got the handholds. For when you're travelling and you're getting from the back to into the saloon, really nice and sitting up and down. But it does double up. So it doubles over into a big dining table as well. Really lends itself to outside dining, this does. Lights above, does have its own fusion unit as well out here, so we can nice. control the music from out here. Um, I even like the fact it's got holders for like the boat hooks. Oh yes. Yeah. So there's two there, and there's also one over there, which is by the outside wet bar. Nice. And um, the outside wet bar has storage. There's actually a bin in here as well to put your bits and pieces. Nice worktop again, nicely finished. Um, but we have a grill. That's lovely. So don't it? forget this has a generator as well. We're talking about toys. But he's got a generator as well. Um, obviously um, a sink as well with the tap just folds up and down, neatly stows away. And we also have out here a top loading bridge. Do you know what I was impressed by that? It's just how deep it is. It goes right the way down there. 
you're not going to be short of your beers or big bottles of water no, on there. Absolutely, are you? Not, absolutely not. There's a heating vent out here as well, um, which is um, obviously throughout the boat is a heating as well. But then it leads into the main saloon, which is, and we've opened the doors up completely now, so you can appreciate the inside-outside element. And something I want to just get across to people as well with the whole side size of being out here. This is where um, a 57-foot boat really does come into its own because the cockpit space that you have in here, you know, this is a bigger cockpit space in this area than something like a Fairline Targa 40. You know, this is huge, and this is not your only lounging space, as we'll show you in a minute. There's a few tips out here as well, which are quite nice. So just on the top here. Um, you've got a retractable sunshade. So that sh sunshade comes all the way out and then covers that huge sun pad at the back as well. So you've got such an amazing space to spend outside. But of course, on a boat like this in the winter, it's brilliant because you close the doors and you've got it all over again inside, which we'll now show you. So yeah, it, it does blow me away how much space you've got in a cockpit. And you've got this lovely set of, as I mentioned earlier, JB covers here, uh, really, really tight, beautifully fitting covers. And because you've got the heating vent, you, know, you don't need to be indoors, even in winter. You've got a nice space out here. But inside is really where the princess luxury starts to come through. Um, something that really strikes me on this boat, there's so many different textures. So you've got the suede ceiling linings, you've got very, very high gloss wood on the work surfaces, you've then got a, a, a matte wood surface here, and it all just comes together to give you this amazing feel of luxury. The, the leather upholstery is all in very, very nice condition, and all of the different seating areas seem to be made in a slightly different fabric, which again just makes this boat feel quite unique in all the different areas. Seating space around here, comfortably spaced for eight to ten people. And of course, just as the table outside, it's got a trick that it will open right the way up and you've got this beautiful condition table there if you wanted to have a, a huge amount of people here for dining. There's a couple of little stools which are stored downstairs, which you could bring them up here as well. Uh, sorry, that's not Don't. the only trick to the table. There's another trick. Yes. So the table does go up and down. So as Andrew opened it, it's actually like a bit of a drinks coffee table at this height, but when it was fully open, um, you can actually raise it oh, nice. and it becomes a full-size dining table. That's really nice. So I just thought that was a big chunky pedestal. I'm glad, glad you, glad you, glad you <laughs> yeah. tested all the buttons. Uh, but it is a big chunky pedestal. Look at the size of it. It's all That's about over-engineering. <laughs> <laughs> it does mean you can sit on it. I'm not going to try it, but it does mean I can, you can sit on that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and then on this side here, you've got a really, really lovely sideboard. Again, different textures. Just Princess could have just had one piece of wood across there, but no, they've inlaid another texture. There's a stainless steel bar running through that, and it just oozes quality. Uh, on some boats, you have to press um, this button once. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm now operating the um, sunshade outside. I knew I'd do that. It's the top button. If I press that just once, up comes the television. And you've got a really good sized television. On some boats, you have to press that button and keep it pressed. On a princess, you just press it and it does all the hard work for you. What size do you reckon that is? I reckon it's, it's got to be a 55, do you think? 50? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. I'll go 50. Yeah. I've got a 50 yet. You reckon oh, that's about yeah, right. Yeah, that's but, about right. But from a family point of view of sitting down here, you know, in the cosy winter evening, sitting watching television, that is just a fantastic mm. place. Um, it's also, it's big enough that if you did have something like in the middle of the summer, you want to watch a fo football match or something, people from outside could watch that as well. So it's a ni nice ability there. Um, in terms of storage space, there's storage in here, but there's also more fridges. Uh, we, we joked about this earlier, this boat is definitely a sociable boat. Um, the socialising starts with an ice maker. So you've got an ice maker which is just inside here. Um, I always joke about how, I don't understand how quickly they make ice, but usually about 15, 20 minutes you've got ice cubes. And then inside this one you have um, just storage. So you've got storage space in there, but you have one of the top of the line Fusion Apollo RA770 um, radios. I should get a quick plug in for our Superstore. We do sell those on the Parker Adams Superstore. We do sell those. Um, and then Jonathan referred earlier to the track vision, so that's your satellite television in there as well. Some people could put an Apple TV there, and anything that you want to drive that television can be done. These Fusions I love because they're all touch screen. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they're really nice, really intuitive, really easy to use. Yeah, and it's, it just looks a lovely upgrade in the boat as well because that looks mm. so high end. Um, and then inside here, we love a drinks cabinet. And yes, we do. Princess do drinks cabinets very, very well. So you can see on here, you have a beautifully appointed um, drinks cabinet here. 
I love the way the glasses are all set into the acrylic so they don't rattle, bang, mm. crash around when you're out at sea. Um, it's I just easy. love the way they're lit. It's funny because a boat like this, it's easy when you're in a marina like this to forget that this is an incredibly capable sea boat. Mm. And actually the best things to do on this boat is to head off to the coast of France, head down to the West Country. And of course, it's important to make sure things don't well, rattle. Inevitably, you're going to get into rough weather at some will. point. And the, but the Princess has designed the boat around that. So with storage, storage like that yeah. really goes to show what it's been thinking about. However, it's still thinking about socialising because yeah. you've got another fridge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so another it fridge is wine here. glasses after all and champagne glasses. It's important to be able to have <laughs> exactly. ch chilled wine and champagne to go with it. Uh, so another fridge here. So just in this little area here, um, there's three cooling areas, including <laughs> the ice breaker. Yeah, so crazy. we like that. So should we go on to some of the more practical side of the helm position? Okay. That's well, yeah, we can. You, you like helm position? Yeah, I love the princess helm position. Um, I love the seats to start off with. I love the way they make them look like sports seats. So you feel like you're driving a sports vehicle. And it really is. The princess um, V range, um, obviously the sports boat style, and but they're really, really capable sea boats as well. The Princess V57 especially, but the whole range of Princess Vs feel very sporty to drive, and this still does. And this is a quick boat. This has twin Volvo Penta D13 900 horsepower engines, which is the bigger um, option on this boat as well. So it is the larger engine option. They do do 800s as well for this boat. Um, there is only, weirdly, a couple of knots between. This is a 35, well, the spec says 36, I reckon comfortably a 35 knot boat, whereas the 800 is slightly that. less. But I'm blown away by that. It's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. We, I always look at boats like this and think, you know, it'd be good if it does 30 knots, but to be able to actually be closer to yeah. 40. Your is cruising speeds are going to be, what, 25 to 30 knots yeah. on this? easily. Um, the 900s do give you, believe it or not, being more power, they do give you a better fuel economy at cruising speeds over the 800s, because the 800s are working harder than the 900s, so the props are pitched different because of that, which gives you a better fuel economy, which is why it's the preferred option. And of course you want the biggest engine option when you buy a boat, <laughs> definitely do. Um, really nicely laid out dash, again it's thinking of, it feels like, again, a car to drive. Um, and you've got the rev counters here, um, rudder indicator in the middle, normal compass as you would expect, but Volvo have got this lovely screen now. Um, what's it called? It's the seven inch display. It's the seven inch Volvo Penta <laughs> display and of course you can have all your information through here um, from fuel economy to engine information um, to um, if it's got cameras down in the engine bay, things like that, which I'm not sure it does. Don't think no, but it camera. does have the options for that. It's a very capable screen, um, but it's not the only thing as well. So, oh, there we go. I just want to prove myself to be wrong. So, <laughs> so I, as soon as I said I don't think it does, I suddenly remembered that it does. And so, yeah, on here you've got the um, yeah the engine room camera there, and there's other cameras. We'll show you in a minute. Sorry, I'm interrupting. No, but that's, I right, that's I'm right. No, well, we'll rubbish. go on to that now because <laughs> we are actually looking at the 12-inch Raymarine. You know, I, th I think it's a 16. In fact, I'm going to go with 16. I've got 12s on my well, boat. Well, 12 actually. Yeah. That's a ruler. Yeah, it's got to be, isn't it? Yeah, and I've got yeah. screen envy because I don't like any screens better <laughs> than my screens. <laughs> <laughs> and really nice size screen um, an upgrade from new yes it is so this boat has got although it's a, a new boat so it's only a 2015 boat um, the owner has already upgraded nav on it which i love to see so it's got this 16 inch raymarine axiom plotter and you've also got the upgraded um chart uh, autopilot it's not a chart plotter autopilot <laughs> yeah. a p70 head and an i70 head here and Jonathan will show you, one of the things I love about the i70 is you can customise the different displays. So you can have on there your depth in a really big gauge to always show you it, your speed, your lat long, navigation data, and even engine data on there as well. Absolutely. Um, it does have parking aids as well. As you can see, it has a rear camera. And the only part when you're manoeuvring this boat is um, it's got great visibility. So Princess have really thought about that. So through from the, the large side windows to the large screen, in the sitting position here, I actually have the best visibility. I won't get any better visibility standing up. You do have that option when the roof is open though to peer out over the screen. Um, but the only compromise, looking back, um, I can't see the back of the boat because of the garage. And with the doors open though, I can see very clearly behind me. So we're at speed looking behind. Um, I can actually have good visibility, but when docking, um, I just can't see the back, but I can see the sides and the front very easily. So having this camera 
really is good. And it does have a bow and stern thruster. This is on shaft drive. I really like shaft drive. I think when you get to this size of boat, um, it all switches back from IPS to shaft. And I, and I do like that. It's the simplicity of that and the reliability. And these are designed to do long passages. So very long passages just have the reliability of the shaft drive. Um, and we have bow and stern thruster associated with that. And that's, we should just point out on this, so it is a proportional bow and stern thruster on this one. Um, and the, the beauty of this is so many bow thrusters have just got that on off. So they're very, they're very binary. I want to use the bow thruster, I'm turning it on, I'm turning it off. On this, you can actually feather the amount of bow thrusting that you're doing. And that's a fantastic um, feature on the side power, as well as having a hold feature. So when you're maneuvering the boat, you can actually pin it against the side of the pontoon, just with a little bit of power or a lot of power. Yeah. And let's see if we can demonstrate that. Yeah. So if I, you can see it going a little bit. You can really hear you can that. Hear that. You? Yeah, hopefully you can hear it. And it shows you on the display how much, you're, how much power you're using. So you can see the arrow increase. So it's fantastic. And I can, then the stern as well. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, it does have the remote control but the remote control only does full. So it does full either way, but this, um, this controller is the one for just doing the, um, what do you call it? Uh, proportional. Proportional, <laughs> proportional. Um, I love the fact it's got um, vents blowing out to me to keep me nice and warm. Um, and we obviously have the Raymarine um, VHF to hand and your engine control, Bennett trim tabs. Um, you can switch the engines on and off here. It doesn't have keys. It has a fob, so it has the Volvo Penta immobiliser fob, and you just wave that over the controls and that energises them to then turn them on and off. So it's basically a keyless start boat. We can adjust the steering up and down, and we can adjust the seats. There are bolsters as well, so we can stand at the helm if we wish to, um, but I would always probably just sit here, let you know all the crew. You'd only sit down because you'd be holding a cup of tea. Exactly. Jonathan loves a cup of tea. Well, when we're going to put my cup of tea in my cup holder. Nice. <laughs> um, so I do like the traditional side of it as well. So we do have a normal compass and we do have a nav chart yeah, as well. Good. So we still have that backup of being able to use um, normal navigation. And of just, course, we all know how to do that. <laughs> and Jen, just talking about the textures, again, much like a high-end car, you've got a stitch piece of leather on the top there, which again, well, princess don't need to do that, but yeah. it's there. And that's what I love well, about it. this and, quality And the wood of insert, it's like well, the wooden dash, look. Yeah, wood insert all the way around there. Oh, Jack. Um, on this side, you've got um, storage places. So you've got two cubby holes under here. You've got a first aid kit. The owner's obviously using this boat regularly. There's bits and bobs around. Um, then in here, you've got the, um, the screen covers. And then through here, you've got the air, reverse cycle air conditioning. So this boat is actually fitted with four different reverse cycle air conditioning units. And something that really struck me when we came on board the boat, it was pretty cold this morning, and within, I would say, 15, 20 minutes, I was actually turning off the units. So it's a boat that can be kept very cosy during the winter, but it does have reverse cycle air conditioning as well as a separate heating system, which is really good. Yeah. And don't forget, we've got this huge retractable roof. It's massive, isn't so it? So if you want to get the sporty outside feel, this whole roof retracts back. And you can see as well, because we've got a blind in one, so it has blinds as well, um, which are really nicely fitted from the sun, um, or no blinds, so you've got your choice. It also has electric side windows. So we've got a window on that side, which I'll put down a little bit. So you can see we can open up the side windows as well, and I've got one next to me as well. And, and this obviously is also good, so I can shout at people <laughs> when mooring up. Do you mean gently give Get them directions? Get that line on! Do you mean gently give them directions? <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yes, gently direct. But also I can stick my head out when it's fully down and I can see the pontoon if I'm mooring on that side. Um, or I can sort of put my head out that one and, and see the pontoon mooring that side because I have my remote bow and stern thruster. Um, you could single hand this as well. Yeah. With the remote bow and th stern thruster, you could single hand this as well. Um, it is a bit of a jog to the back of the boat to get <laughs> on, um, but you could do it. And I'd feel confident that I could do it myself as well. Uh, always, it's always a test of a boat to me to see if I could single hand them. And this one, I, I, I think I probably could. Right, let's uh, 
We're going to head down. Head down. We'll just um, highlight the, um, the switch panel as you go down. Um, typical princess quality. Um, it's all custom CNC made. Um, it's backlit as well, so you can turn the illumination on and off. Um, and of course, you've got here all your monitoring, how many amps are going into the battery, how many amps the battery is drawing. But as you drop down into here, you start to really get a feel that you've dropped down into this boat. And so you can see this beautiful seating area down here. And what I'll do is I'll swing by here and show you the galley area as well. So the galley area on this, very similar to the V50. Um, you've got a fairly small but very, very functional galley area. So lots of good work surface around here. You've got a ceramic hob, because of course this boat, as Jonathan mentioned, has a generator fitted to it. And then you've got this lovely Siemens um, combi um, microwave oven here. And then you've got space down here where you can get all your pots and pans. So often we see boats, and my own boat is guilty of this, they've got this lovely vented space underneath the um, oven where you can't put anything. But this boat's got that thought through really nicely. And as if by magic, oh. Jonathan's lounging again. <laughs> well, I found another seating area. It's lovely, isn't This it? is the third seating area now. Um, but again, this is brilliant for first thing in the morning or last thing at night, coffee in the morning, with your breakfast, really nice. There is a television here as well, so it's not only got the big TV up there, there's a second TV here, I think that's probably 32. It's a good size, isn't it? It is a good size yeah. TV. Um, and, um, and of course, another um, lovely table. I do like these stools that Princess provides as well. Um, they're just nice finish. You can have a couple other people, because of course, you know, you've got three cabins in this boat, so potentially you might have um, six people sleeping on here, um, sort of minimum really. Um, and I like the blinds. So all the blinds um, are, are ocean air blinds, of course, seems to be the preferred choice. But I like the fact they operate just off this one piece of string. Quite often the Venetian blinds, you've got one either end and they're a bit fiddly because you've got to pull them up and down and the whole thing of tugging it to get it down, it's a pain. But this one, you simply pull one way or the other to open or shut it, like that. Um, but if you carry on pulling it, it'll come up. It's really nice there. Don't know how they've designed that. That's, that's someone clever's thought that. Yeah, exactly. It's someone <laughs> cleverer, than, cleverer than me. Um, but then obviously it, it provides, and even these finishes are nice. These are soft finishes, textured as well. And a nice contrast to the lighter colour, it goes slightly sort of mushroom colour. Yeah. I, I like that. And then a lovely sort of porthole as well. Yeah, it has been so well thought out with all these design textures and cues. And Jonathan mentioned there it has a three cabin boat. So this is really, when we've done the walkthrough tour on the V50 we've got for sale at the moment, um, this cabin here is probably one of the big differences as well as the rear space. And if you open up this, you've got a brilliant bunk bed uh, cabin in here. So I'm just gonna turn the lights on there because we have a few strobing issues with LED lights there. So you can see in here, you have a brilliant space for children. So if you've got a couple of kids, this is where they'll want to go in the evening. And you have their own television as well. So you've got a built-in television into the wall there so they can watch TV in bed and leave the adults to have the fun with all the drinking upstairs. Yeah, I love so, it in there. So it is a really nice place. Two large portholes as well. And you can see underneath there, there's another um, bed down there. And there's even a radio controlled boat. I suspect that might be staying with the owner. Um, but it is, <laughs> is really, really beautiful in there. Kids probably don't get a look in with that. I would, they wouldn't do if they were mine, I tell you that. I'd be on that all the time. <laughs> um, um, you can control the air conditioning from down here as well. So there's four units, so there'll be four of these dotted around. So here's, a, here's another one. They do have nice touches like these drawers, nicely nice. fitted. Um, but again, all the pegs will hold the cups and cutlery in position, again, to protect them when you're out at sea. In fact, it's really nice, because I, all... I mentioned the galley area isn't huge. It's a perfectly sized galley, but it's not enormous. But if they've cleverly thought to have more space on the outside, and actually that's where you want to have your cups and saucers, etc. Lovely quality, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And it's all princess logo. Well, I'd, be worried well. if it, I'd be worried if it was Sunseeker. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's really nice. Um, and well, well, don't get out of your way. You can go yeah. through to... So I always, these cabins blow me away because I walk into these and this is of course the guest cabin because you have a beautiful master suite. I'll show you in a minute. But the space in here is enormous. You've got tons of area here to, to get dressed in. You've got a really good sized double bed, reading lights, 
And I've talked a bit about textures on this boat. I'm really blown away by the fact that there are so many different feels to this boat. Almost everywhere you go, it has a different feel. So in here, you've got this textured wall lining. You've got almost like a sort of a faux alligator skin um, along here. And it just all feels such premium quality. And at the back, again, you've got more different colours there. And then the headboard is beautifully curved. You can see that just in there. And then lit up with LED lighting. So it is just a, a beautiful double cabin, or is it? Well, it is a, it is a double cabin at the moment. I mean, it's got actually drawers at the end, which are nice. Yeah, it's, nice. it's like a triangular shaped nice. drawer. And they're cleverly shaped because of a reason. And the yes. reason is... Well, the reason I, is, there is, a, out, there is a clue. And we've got a double duvet on here at the moment. But if I lift it up, you can see that it's actually two separate beds you can separate. So you can actually turn this from a island bed into a twin. And that's brilliant. I think if you have more than two children, three, four children, they can all have their own single beds, which is brilliant on a boat like this. Yes, really good. Um, it has another fusion unit in here as well. So it has its own entertainment system in here and air conditioning unit. Um, but of course, being the second cabin, and we know this boat has two heads, um, we've got access to the second heads. And um, vacuum flush toilets throughout into obviously holding tanks, um, so fresh water flush. And then we have this lovely, I do love the Around way the, way. the floor is tiled through not into no, the shower room. That. That's really nice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's really smart. A um, nice big shower room as well. I like the shape of it for some reason, it's triangular. I don't know why that's a benefit. Um, but uh, I just like the shape, really good lots of elbow room and really good headroom. So as you all know, I'm six foot tall, um, so I've got another few inches above my head. I can't wait for you to start shrinking. I can't wait for you <laughs> yeah, not to be able to coming, say I that. I think it's uh, in a few years, I'll start going the other way. The ears keep growing apparently, and your nose, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Um, again, blind in here as well, which of course you might want because of the height of the window. What, what, I don't know. Could you explain that a little bit more to me, Jonathan? I don't understand <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> um, there's a large shelf here, actually, with a finial to stop stuff falling off. Um, and, of course, you've got the thing to clean yourself, clean up afterwards, which yeah, I like. Don't clean yourself with that. That might hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 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 you're probably right. Um, but, yeah, I love that. Um, and I love the finishes again. It's really beautiful. And you still, the attention to detail, even with the stainless fittings, yeah, which, which are sort of mirrored through the boat, but with different woods and textures. Um, it all, there's lots of differences, like Andrew said, but they all tie together nicely. Yeah, it's beautiful. No, it really um, is this is a storage cupboard. Well, not so quite a deep one. There's a actually space, two yeah. mirrors in here as well. There's a lot of space. Um, and then the second mirror there. And of course, being, um, this also doubles as day heads. So there's another door here. So I can go out of this door back into the galley area. And storage under the floor. And if you look in the, and there's a big fridge. Again. Yeah, big yeah, fridge yeah we've there. gone in the big fridge. Um, but of course that doesn't, that's not it, is it? It's not. So there's a piece de resistance, <laughs> as they say. Still haven't slept in one of these cabins. One day I'm going to sleep in one of these cabins. Not on a boat we're selling, of course. Um, but this is a beautiful full width master cabin where you wake up in the morning and see the sea on both sides, which must just feel amazing. So if I come back into this area here, this is just an incredible view. Um, again, you've got these different textures going on in here. You've got a wooden slatted top headboard, um, a lovely padded um, lower headboard and there is even another lounging seat that I suspect I'll find Jonathan sitting on in a minute. Um, but these windows really are beautiful. I talked earlier on about this where um, the more modern boats, the boats probably from 2019, 20 onwards, got these full swathes of glass. This was a taster to that. So these, this boat really shows that's the level of glass that often in these more modern boats continues all the way along. But I quite like the fact that there's big portholes which are nice and safe but where you want the glass to come in you've got it here and it's not on a point that the waves are bashing the hull either so it's really really nice here and just like upstairs again you've got the texture um, that's inlaid into here you've got storage all the way throughout here um, you've got a really good size I'll open that up it's a big cupboard in there it's all lit with LED lights in it and just as Jonathan said, the attention to detail, the quality everywhere really is absolutely exceptional. Don't be fooled by Andrew stooping. Oh, yeah, because um, if you actually, if you spin round, yep. 
Um, I'm actually, Andrew isn't seven foot tall. Not seven. <laughs> I'm not even six, it's upsetting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Andrew is, is not far off my height, but I'm slightly taller. Um, but as you come down into here, into the seating area and to the bed, you can actually see it has full height. So there is full height walk around here. And as you walk around to the front of the bed, the floor actually drops. So you would think I'd knock my head because it does drop slightly the ceiling height here, but it doesn't because I drop two. And in fact, the head height is very much the same, if not a little bit more. Um, and then as we come round to the wardrobe space and where Andrew was, then the floor raises again slightly. So majority of the space in here, you get full head height. Um, there's another television, another nice size TV. It's probably about the same size as the one in the galley area. Um, and then a nice sort of vanity top here as well. Um, as well as there's another fusion unit in one of the cupboards that Andrew was showing you over there. And of course, you've got this lovely seating area. And again, talking about the, um, the different materials used, that's a, a material I haven't even seen anywhere else on the boat. So they really have gone to town on this. It just all ties together beautifully. So let's dive into the extra heads which is in here. Yeah, uh, apologies for a little bit of LED pulsing in this room. We have some issues on some of the dimmable lights, but it's not too bad. Is it pulsing? Oh, a tiny, fine. tiny bit in that one. It was worse earlier. <laughs> I think it's the dimmable one. Oh, another full size shower. Um, and again, tiled through to match the other one. And this does, it's actually bigger. As I say, you've got even more yeah. height there, actually. Yeah, more headroom, a bit more space. And of course, there's no blinds in this one. So, um, um, so it's a bit more of a, a proper wet room, this one. There is a um, extractor fan as well, which is running at the moment. And again, place, I always like the fact there's somewhere to put your shower gel and things like that on. There's so many times you get in a shower, there's nowhere to put anything. Or it's just on a little corner thing which falls <laughs> off. So I do like that. And so it's a very practical boat. Princess really think about the practicalities as well as the, the aesthetics. Um, again, obviously storage, blinds, big mirror, and extra height storage as well. I know it's on a lot of boats now, but I always love the countertop sinks. I always think it yeah, adds do, such yeah. a high-end feel. Um, to boats just to have those there. Um, yeah, it was a, a great addition a few years ago, someone thought to put those in. Yeah, it certainly does. Well, even like this, look. That's like a glass. That's like a glass top just to, just to fit these two lights in. Yeah. It's, it's you, just, you wouldn't, it's, yeah, we wouldn't bother normally, would no, you? It's, but the, it's, just that it's the Princess Fairline, bit. the Fairline Sunseeker quality. Those three top UK brands, you really see the quality oozing and If through. you look at the doors as well, so often doors rattle, yeah. you can see these rubber inserts all the way around just to stop the doors rattling when you're at sea. Because inevitably, mine rattle, mine all rattle. I do have a fair line, but it's an older fair line, <laughs> so I'm sure they've solved that problem. Right. Right, should we go back up into the... Yes, because I've shut the doors. Oh, hey, wow, and that's why it's so toasty, in fact, I think I might die. <laughs> it's really warm up here now. That <laughs> yeah. shows you just how efficient this heating system is. Yeah. In fact, I will turn it off because that is amazing how much that heated up there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop this down. We're going to attempt to put the, um, the GoPro onto a little tripod here. Right, come and sit next to me. Right, so we thought we'd do an almost final piece of the camera. So there's a couple of things to cover, which is down in the engine bay. So we'll go down there in a minute. That's your department. Yeah, very exciting engine bay as well. There's a secret room in there, which we'll show you. Um, but uh, I was very excited to find it. So we'll go down there in a minute, but we thought we'll just bring you the last few sort of wrap ups of this boat. Um, I hope the enthusiasm has come across. This is a stunning boat. It really is very, very special. It's been a pleasure to be on board it. Um, something I want to just touch on is the new boat side of things, because this boat is a 2015 boat, so it is nine years old. However, I, that seems wrong to say this boat's nine years old because it feels absolutely fantastic. And a new boat, something of this size, of this quality, yeah. it's going to be touching half a million pounds. Uh, sorry, it's going to be touching two million pounds. Sorry. A boat of this size, of this quality, is going to be coming on for nearly two million pounds. Now, this, of course, is still a very expensive boat, but it's way under half of that. Absolutely. And, and it, I can't think of anything else that you would add to a boat. No, this is a fully loaded boat. It's got Absolutely. everything. It's got, the, it's got the passerelle. It's got the... It's got the hydraulic platform, it's got the retractable blind, it's got air conditioning, it's got heating. Um, it's a fully, fully loaded boat. And the only thing that you would, you would take from buying a new one over this one is you can have your own design cues. But I think the design in this is beautiful. All the finishes and, 
and the upholsteries are all lovely, um, but you'd have to pay like a million pound premium just to choose what curtains you want. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't make sense. Um, so this is a proven brand, a proven boat. The V57 is the best of both worlds. Beautiful looking boat, yeah. ageless design. I don't think you can beat it. No, it's stunning and I have to say so. I put it on silent, my phone is, is buzzing now. Um, yeah, and I have to say that the boat is, as you say, is timeless. It's the sort of boat that you go into a marina in 20 years time with this boat, it's still gonna look phenomenal. Yeah. Um, the textures, as I keep banging on in this video, are just beautiful. The boat is such a premium feeling boat. Um, and it's a boat that not only is it a home from home here in a marina, but you want to take it places. You want to go down to the West Country, you want to go across the channel, you want to explore places. Exactly, because of the size of it, you can really do that. And yeah. um, we're talking about size, um, it's actually um, 58 foot 8 inches, which is 17.88 meters long, so slightly longer than the V57 would suggest. Um, it has a 2,200 litre fuel tank, so a large fuel tank. Um, so really good for doing long passages, um, just under 500 litre water tank and just under 200 litre holding tank. Um, but, um, but again, it is a beautiful boat. So let's Do find the engine bay. That's it. Go and have a little look around there. Um, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You're always good at remembering that one. Thank you very much. And see you on the next video. Indeed. So I'll go and get hold of the camera Thank again. You. And then we'll follow D Jonathan into yeah, follow quite literally into, into the, the bowels of the ship. Well, it has got good access, actually. So quite often on a boat which does have um, things like the garage, you can, it's actually difficult to get into the engine bay without dismantling lots of things. But this is quite simple. Um, it should just be a simple turn of this and a lift up and ooh, the engine fans are on. Should we turn? Yeah, don't we see turn them on. Got no lights now. If I turn them back on the engine fans won't come back. Nice one, thank you. <laughs> right, so let's pop down. So a nice ladder down, and you go straight in between the engines. And they're big engines, aren't they? They are big engines. <laughs> yeah, the D13s, um, very nicely proven, very well built, very reliable, and straight onto shaft drive, so very simple. So you can get at everything here. There's no hydraulics or, um, um, or seals or anything like that underwater that will cause you any problems. So I really like the, um, the shaft drive. Easy access, actually. Let me just um, show you for doing engine checks. Um, there's such good height on the engines as well. See so the engine's right down there, and we can see there's actually the air conditioning units. They've got good access to the pre-filters, and they've got glass bowls so you can actually see um, the, any debris or water in the fuel filters. Um, you can, you've got the water strainers as well, for the weed traps for both engines. And then you can quite easily do engine checks. You can check your antifreeze on both sides very easily. You can check your oils, because they've brought both, they brought the dipsticks to the center. So you can check your oils. So everything is easy. Um, but as we go around to the rear of the engine, um, the electrical boxes, so the engine electrics and then the auxiliary electrics, um, are very easy to get to. The bow and stern thrust, the trips are easy to get to, um, as well as down on the back of the gearbox, as you can see where the shafts and the shaft seals are. Again, easy access. Um, but this is the door I was talking about. So as you open this proper sea door as well, so a proper watertight door, it goes through into um, where the generator is. So you can see the generators sat there, we've got the batteries at the back, and it does then lead all the way through to the rudder access. And you might think that's quite restrictive, but um, don't worry, because to my left is that's actually the crew cabin. In the back of the crew cabin, there's panels you can remove um, to actually gain access to that part of the boat. Um, let me pop back out, and then back round, and then you can see again, just the size and the height above the engines of this engine bay. So when it comes to engineering and looking after the engines, access is key and you really do get great access all around. Um, there is another set of pre-filters in front of this engine and they have two on either side. 
And that's because, again, it's designed for long passages. If you do have a filter clog up, you simply turn the handle and then it switches straight to the other filter. So it's a real benefit um, without having to do any engineering whatsoever to actually clear a blocked fuel filter system just by switching from the blocked filter to an unblocked one. And that's the same both sides. Right, and that is the engine bay on the V57. Right, and I think then. I'll leave Jonathan to get out of there. Um, and just to, to close up, we've done our, I've done our piece to camera and said how much we love this boat. Uh, we really do. It's a beautiful boat. We're excited to bring you this boat and it's so great that we're getting um, this size and this quality boat to sell and present on the channel. So thanks as always for watching. I'm going to say it this time, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel and we will see you on the next video. Thanks as always.